Farid Malim meets his Russian counterpart in Moscow and asserts that reform can only come through dialogue. Syrian armed forces inflict heavy casualties on armed terrorists in several areas. A sit-in and protest marches by Syrians in Paris against terrorism and its supporters. Good afternoon, Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates, Walid Muallim, extended thanks to both the Russian people and its leadership, pointing out that he was authorized by President al-Assad to convey thanks to the Russian people, the Russian President Vladimir Putin and Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov for their principal stance taken by Federal Russia and its adherence to the UN Charter and the international law which led to prevent the foreign intervention, especially the military one in Syria, like what happened in Libya. Ahead of talks today with his Russian counterpart, al Malim said that what is going on in Syria now is a war waged by terrorism on the country, explaining that al-Nusra Front, which is part of al-Qaeda, is the main party which commits terrorist acts in Syria, adding that this front has attracted terrorists from 28 countries. Mr. al Malam said that Syria was ready to open dialogue with anybody who wishes to do, so, to do so, including those who carried weapons. Syria believes, according to al Malam, that reform would not come through bloodshed, but through dialogue. For his part, Russian Foreign Minister considered that his meeting with Minister al Muallim is important to compare the stances between Moscow and Damascus and to see how to push forward the comprehensive national dialogue in Syria. In a speech in the Diplomatic Academy in Moscow, the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that the role of the Middle East and the Islamic world in the Russian foreign policy is not witnessing any retreat. He called for remembering the Palestinian cause against the background of the so-called Arab Spring. He recalled Russia's meeting with the Arab League in Moscow last week within the context of a strategic dialogue. He considered the priority of this region assured through Moscow's vision of building relations with the Arab League. The Syrian Arab Army inflicted heavy casualties among the terrorist groups in a series of operations carried out in al Shifoni and Aliyah in al Ghouta of Damascus countryside. An official source said that units of the Syrian Arab Army conducted a qualitative operation killing the leaders of three terrorist groups to the east of al Shifoni. In the same context, army units also targeted a terrorist gathering at the town of Aliyah, killing and injuring a number of terrorists and destroying their hideouts. In the far of Rima and Ras al Marra in Damascus countryside, units of the Syrian Arab Army killed many terrorists and injured several others, destroying their vehicles. In Idlib, a unit of the Syrian Arab Army killed a number of terrorists and injured many others in the farms of Sheikh Hussein in just a Shagur countryside. Among the terrorists killed, there was Abu Salah al Hariri, a leader of a terrorist group. Also in Homs, an army unit killed a number of terrorists and injured many others in Arastan farms, destroying a vehicle equipped with Dushka machine gun. Among the terrorists who were killed there were Khaled Qurman, leader of a terrorist group, in addition to the terrorist Usama Dhik and Mustafa al -Daas. In Homs, an army unit destroyed two vehicles. One of them is a truck loaded with large amounts of weapons, ammunition and explosives. On the road to Dibe and Shamsin in Homs countryside, also in the countryside of Homs, the Syrian Arab army foiled yesterday an infiltration attempt by a large number of terrorists coming from Lebanon. The operation was described as being the most dangerous of its kind. Students and citizens of the Syrian community in France staged a sit-in before the High Institute of the Arab World in Paris, which has become a center of support for the crimes of the terrorists.
They asserted the rejection of the role played by this center, which organized a campaign of donation to be given to the terrorist gangs in Syria. Those taking part in this protest were subjected to attacks by the organizers of the financial donations to the terrorists before the center. The protesters moved to a central square at, at the heart of Paris, where they were joined by Lebanese, Tunisian, Bahraini, Pakistani, and even a number of French protesters. A source in the Russian military staff announced that vessels from the three Russian naval fleets in the Baltic, Black and North Seas will be deployed permanently within the operating for formations in the Mediterranean Sea starting from 2015. This deployment will be part of the group of the fifth formation of the Russian Navy. It will be working permanently and carrying out combat missions planned suddenly in the Mediterranean in order to deter any threats to the Russian national and military security. funeral of the Palestinian prisoner Arafat Jaladat in the West Bank city of Hebron has turned into bloody confrontations between thousands of Palestinian mourners and the Israeli forces of occupation. Occupation forces shot gunfire at the mourners, injuring dozens of them. Meanwhile, and in a desecration of the holy places, Israeli settlers, supported by the forces of occupation, stormed into the squares of Al-Aqsa Mosque and attacked the worshippers who were defying the occupation policies of Judaization which aims at speeding up the construction of the alleged Jewish temple. The third station of the eighth maneuvers, named after the great prophet, began by the land forces that belong to the revolutionary guards in southeastern Iran. The Iranian forces are working to slow down hostile movements through the use of artillery and opening fire against the enemy until armored units arrive to confront and eventually foil enemy attacks. Within the same context, the commander of the Iranian naval forces, Admiral Habibullah Sayari, announced that Iranian battleships will enter the Pacific Ocean tomorrow. The ships include a helicopter carrier and a destroyer which will enter the Pacific through the Straits of Malacca. They will head afterwards in the Chinese, to the Chinese port of Jiangjiang. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad asserted the importance of developing good relations between Tehran and countries of the region, especially the Gulf countries. Addressing the Gulf Supreme Council, Ahmadinejad said that the development of relations with the countries in the region is part of Iran's firm policies. The Iranian President described the Gulf region as influential on the regional and international affairs. For his part, Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Salihi asserted during the preparatory meetings of the Gulf Higher Council that the lack of security and stability affects all countries in the region and that stability can be achieved within the framework of collective security. Salihi asserted that Iran considers the security in the Gulf countries as related to its own security. This was it. More details on our website, www.syrianonline.sy. The latest in oil, stocks and hard currency is in our economic news, but after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Ministry of Agriculture stressed that the area suggested for the project of the artificial forestation of the current year is about 6,600 hectares. And concerning the investment project that is about to be done during the current season, the Ministry indicated that many of these projects are about establishing water dams in the mountains of the coast, in addition to another project for developing the forests which aims at developing about 6,000 hectares every year. The futures were little changed in New York after gaining 0.3% on February 22, whereas the Brent crude for April settlement rose 26 cents per barrel on the London-based ICE Futures Europe Exchange, as the volume was 23% less than the 100-day average.
Most European stocks gained amid speculations that Japan may appoint a central bank chief who favors the stimulus. And, and as investors awaited the results of Italy's parliamentary elections, the U.S. index futures were little changed, while the Asian stocks rose, extending the last week's advance as the Japanese shares led the gains on speculations that the next Bank of Japan governor will deploy aggressive monetary easing. On the other hand, the Nikkei index when was up 1.57% in Tokyo Stock Exchange. In the local markets, the price of the 21 karat gold was set at 4,350 Syrian pounds. While the Jewelry's Assembly set the price of Rashadi Golden Coin at 31,800 Syrian pounds and the English Coin at 35,800 Syrian pounds. The yen fell to its weakest level since May 2010 against the U.S. dollar as the Japanese government pursued the Prime Minister's plan for the expanded monetary stimulus. The Japanese currency declined against all its 16 major counterparts after an official source said that the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is likely to nominate the governor of the Asian Development Bank to become the governor of the Bank of Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.